spectators, excuse me. Well, after all of that, Jeremy, the, the break has worked out pretty well for Torsten Hoban. Yeah, and these guys, you know, these are the best players in the world, so they're they're gonna figure out they're gonna figure out a way to make balls. But the main thing you're gonna see this week that we don't see as much of in other tournaments at times is how, how random the racks look, how much different the layouts are, and then you're really gonna see how great these players are. Now don't forget you can see all of the action on table one on matchroom.live and also on the matchroom Facebook page. As for table two, well that's available on the Matchroom YouTube Matchroom Pool YouTube page. Starting off on table two right now, it's Japan against Turkey. Engine Neron up against Naoki Oi, that great character. We'll keep you informed about all of the tables all of the time. When we have a, a scoreline to come through that's of significance, you'll be the first to know. And what you'll see with this new break rule is there'll be a class of players that it does bother at first. Um, I hate to say it, but ooh, we'll see the tight pockets there rearing its head on that two ball. But, you know, some players kind of rely on the wing ball a little bit to get going, uh, rely on, you know, what is a pretty good shot after the break a lot of times where here it's going to be a lot more random. So it's going to be a little men mentally fatiguing for some of the players. Well, you know, the top guys, I think, you know, maybe a hair of a shock to their system at first, but it shouldn't slow them down. Well, in terms of positional play, that was one of the the best shots you're going to see. That was absolutely on a dime. Yeah, 128 players seated here. So I think you're going to see some considerable favorites. But the thing I'm interested to see, especially, you know, I was pretty impressed at the UK Open with a lot of the, the British players that I didn't know. Um, and I think it's going to be even more so here in Germany. That's what I'm interested to see. Of course, the the class will shine come towards the end of the tournament. You always figure that, but but uh, but I'm really interested to see you know which local German players really make a run here. This looks like a very handy safety. Both of these two are veterans, as are 48 years of age. But he's been representing Sweden for quite some time now. And he absolutely loves the game. He's one of those players who would play tournament pool 365 days a year if he could. Well, he's done a few things here in this first rack to get him in position to, to take a lead and you know, he's a considerable underdog here. You could say that, but a good start is always what an underdog needs. Yeah, definitely an underdog. There's no doubt about that. But looking at his record, he's represented Sweden in the, the European Pool Championships over the years. I'm not going to say he's a, a no-hoper. Well, this ball overran a bit, and he's gotten a bit straight on the slick table. Really hard to get this cue ball close to the eight. A little elevated over the nine, it looks like. So big shot here to start. Well, that was a pretty nice stroke there. And that's what we'll see with this break, a little, little bit more of uh, with this break format, that is a little more time at the table sometimes for the underdogs. The break's going to slow down the better players a bit. Well, that was a very interesting start, wasn't it? The man who has got so much pressure on his shoulders because he's playing on home soil, Torsten Homan, 
Missed a ball he shouldn't have. And there were some really good shots there from the Swede, who now leads 1-0. Now, don't forget over on table two, you can see all of the action over there on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. And I can tell you, Naoki Oi took the first rack after getting ball in hand from Engine Niron. Other games currently in progress. The likes of Jani Uski. He's taken a 1-0 lead over Tobias Hurt from right here in Germany. Chris Melling is in action on table four. He leads Janis Chalaftis from Greece, 1-0. Wojciech Shevchik is 1-0 up on Oi Chung Chan. And coming all the way from New Zealand, great to see Matt Edwards. He leads Istvan Farkas, 1-0. And this is another thing we'll see at times. Uh, the guy's got to figure out the timing on this break because you'll notice they'll be cutting the one a bit. So when the timing's off a little bit, we may see some clusters near the racking area. And I think Chris Melling may be a guy that makes a, a really serious run at this title. I think he played really well at the World Cup of Pool. He's putting in a lot more time playing nine ball than he has in the last probably two years. And I think he's kind of settled, maybe taking a little pressure off himself in some of these events. The official there removing that break template. Desislava Boshilova from Bulgaria. And news out of Bulgaria. Well, another wonderful success. We'll be talking about this as the, the day progresses, no doubt in greater depth. But another wonderful success for Francisco Sanchez Ruiz last night, who won the Petrish Open, a Euro Tour event in Bulgaria, beating Eklund Kachi 9-6 in the final. So congratulations to FSR. Yeah, that's been a pretty common theme here. It seems like the last 12 months for FSR, he's just been playing incredible, just kind of become probably a top five player in the world and it's not like any question it seems like always talked about his counterpart David Alcady and he's always highly ranked as well but it seems like Ruiz has gone to another level and getting back to Thorsten Holman as you know the player here and from Fulda man what a host he's been so far as well all the players have said oh Thorsten's helped me with this Thorsten's helped me with that and just making sure all these great players are as comfortable and welcome as they can here in Germany. Interesting little shot here. I'm not sure where he's going with this one. Tough to thin this and get around the seven. Well, that may work. Not sure how much of the two ball. I think he has a sliver of the two ball here. Of course, you can see the kick shot is really brutal. Referee's got to be on top of this one with the pink four there. Pretty smart shot there, trying to get some separation on the two. Just keep it simple when you know the five and the eight are locked up like that. You don't want to go too overboard. Now we'll see this, if center up. He'll probably play into the five eight with the cue ball sending the two back up table. Trying to do two things at once here. Take care of a problem. Well, he just came behind it. I thought he may try to open those two balls just a little bit with the cue ball. Pretty smart shot overall though. I can tell you Naoki Oi has taken a 2-0 lead over on table two. Engine Neron had a chance, missed the, the six ball down the rail, and Oi had no problem tidying up. Yeah, Naoki Oi, who has slowed down a little bit from the pace he was on for what seemed like 18 months. He just had top finish after top finish, and 
just shows you how tough this sport is. But you expect him to be back in that final eight sometime soon, maybe even snap off his you know, biggest title to date. A timely look at table two there, having seen the quality of that shot. Of course, we have to stress here, Jeremy, that it's double elimination. But you don't want to lose on the first morning, do you? That means a lot of work ahead. Yeah, we had that at the UK Open. That being Ruiz, who lost his first match and really made a comeback uh, in a couple other matches to stay in the event and then end up making, well, almost as deep a run as anyone. It was Filler that took that one down. But it's another German we'll talk a lot about this week, I'm sure. Nice hit, and we'll see our first look at the jump cue, I believe, from either one of these two. He'll be relieved to see where the cue ball finished up there. Jeremy, you've played at home in the great state of Texas on many occasions. There is added pressure, isn't there, when a lot of people, family and friends, are watching and supporting? Yeah, absolutely. And Thorsten, who, you know, who kind of rekindled his career, it seems like, the last couple of years. He's playing great. And to be honest with you, Thorsten's the type of player that can have a little bit of a shaky match early anyways until he gets the timing down of his stroke a little bit. Um, it seems like, you know, that's just been his history a little bit. You know, can be a big favorite in some matches, but still have a, a little bit of issues early. So a lot going on with the two-time world champion and Hall of Famer. So contact was made with the two, but after contact was made with the top of the nine ball, that's why Homan has got ball in hand. Yeah, that's what he was worried about. He wanted to clip the five a little thinner and get above the three. Definitely not elevated over the five, but no angle to get on the four here, Phil. This is going to be difficult. It's going to have to take a long shot on the pink four. And really, the five eight is still a little covered up. And the difference in this, or one of the big differences, we'll see many, I think, as the week goes in this break format. Definitely mentally, but if you get behind, you know, even though we're playing winter break, if you get behind three, four racks in a match, you know, with all these great players, that's a huge lead with this format we're, we're, we're moving to in the nine ball world rankings. Trying to decide how he wants to attack the cue ball. Well, he's going to get a sliver of the five, and it's actually a cross corner bank that he's a favorite to make. Cue ball should go around the eight, back up table for the six. Now, this is the type of bank shot that just don't baby it. It'll slide. It'll slide down the rail a little bit and open the pocket from this angle. Needs a touch of left English to go around the eight. Now you hit it high. And that's a little bit of a safety kind of thing, two-way shot. Got to tell you this, over on table two, as we've said, engine Neron is taking on Naoki Oi. Neron won the, the third rack, so got to break in the fourth. And the unpredictability of the break off in these conditions, as Jeremy said, was highlighted. He potted three balls on the break, all into the same pocket, the left-hand middle. Yeah, and these guys, as much of, as they practice this break preparing for the tournament is still not not like match play right you get in match play you're going to have some variance your nerves are a little higher so these guys are still trying to figure out and they will as the event goes what break works best for them okay this is a uh, you know on the fence here do you go offensive do you stay defense 
He could bank the five back down, but you're putting the five near the nine ball, so that's a little dangerous. You could cut the five. I think that's the shot he should go for. Just come right behind the seven, three rails off the bottom rail, back up for the six. Oh, he's overcut this. And that's a little bit of what I was talking about as far as Thorsten. He, you know, he's a player that, that has a little bit of a quicker tempo. So early matches, he's still trying to find his swing a little bit and not saying he's not prepared. It's just, you know, nerves going. Huge situation for him here in Fulda. Tell you, the man from Sweden looks pretty settled though. Now this is falling a little awkward funny. It's a little off angle. He's got to follow two rails it looks like. So he's gonna take a little longer shot on the seven. He wasn't sure, but having watched so much pool on these pockets, we were, Jeremy. Yeah, probably overhit it a touch. Oh, this is a little light. So Thorsten's going to have to make a nice thin shot here on the eight. And the nine's a little bit over, so speed control on the cue ball, pretty important. You can see that hit inside the pocket. But again, match room doing the right thing, making the game a little tougher. Nice shot there. A local boy makes good in the second rack. Homan equalizes. Some quicker matches going on. Nikos Economopoulos from Greece, former Moscone Cup player, Already leads Tomas Jedlecki from Poland, 4-0. Darren Appleton, good to see Darren back in matchroom events. He's taking on David Sobiek from Poland. Appleton has just taken a 3-0 lead. What about the shouter, Elliot Sanderson? He's 2-1 up on his fellow Brit, Graham Hamilton. Dimitri Jungo, who's had a resurgence this year from Switzerland. He's 2-0 up on Pius Bayer from right here in Germany. And Robbie Capito from Hong Kong leads Bora Anar by three racks to zero. Matthias Snigotsky, 4-0 up on Brian Nielsen from Denmark. Well, so many great players you mentioned there. And it looks like Thorsten's pretty comfortable so far with this break. New break format, and he's made the one in the side, which will be a common theme th this week with the players. And one player I'm really interested in, Phil, is Nico. Econom e e e well, <laughs> excuse me, but Nico, I'm, I'm very interested in him. Uh, he's gotten some experience or, or some time, you know, in some big moments with the World Cup, some other big events. He's such a talent. Um, I can't wait to see him really get back into the winner circle, and I think it'll happen. Nikos Economopoulos. I know his last name. I just couldn't pull the trigger <laughs> right then. I had a nightmare when he first came on the scene. So I just basically got in my car, as I always do, and just repeated to myself a hundred times. Yeah. And then, of course, it gets in your mind and you're okay. Yeah. Well, it's funny because it's a guy I know pretty well, actually, just because I watched him so much, you know. I wouldn't say we're best pals or anything like that. We haven't spent a whole lot of time together, but just really like watching him play. Now, Thorsten, who, of course, a great eight ball player, a great straight pool player, and obviously a great rotation player, really handy cue ball, makes a lot of great decisions. And again, when he gets settled in with the stroke, he's going to be a tough player to beat. It's 
like he'll just play a little short side here on the eight, I think. No reason to really move the cue ball much. We start, we're starting this event with 256 players. It will be a double elimination format until the final 64, where we'll go to single elimination. And you get to that stage, you really feel like you can win the event, Phil. Absolutely. Torsten Homan, what a story. Born and raised here in Fulda, Germany. At a very young age, he was interested in sports, started playing football, table tennis, badminton, but it was Poole that really grabbed his attention. At the age of nine, his father took him to a local pool hall. On his 10th birthday, Torsten received a miniature pool table, and the rest really is history. Yeah, well, just a class act in our game, and just really a great human, really. Break and run there in game number three to take a two to one lead. And that's another thing we'll see with the cut break with the cue ball coming back into the rack. A lot of times we'll get some nine ball movement. This is the difference when you're a little bit of a favorite in the match versus later in the event, a situation like this. Just playing one, you know, later in the event against one of the top guys. He may not roll out at all here. He may play behind the one trying to make the three with the cue ball. So he knows against certain players and rolling out in this situation, you're going to take quite a bit the worst of it. Been pretty impressed with the man playing always so far. Been pretty calm over there, even though he's trailing three to one. Over the years, of course, Sweden has produced quite a, a lot of really good pool players, most notably former. European Moscone Cup captain, Marcus Shamat. Yes, we were talking about him last night, as a matter of fact. Marcus, who uh, is a tough player, I'll tell you. Moscone Cup player along with captain. And just a guy who, uh, who played some great pool for a long time. And a little surprised, I know he's not playing a lot of pool, but a little surprised that maybe he didn't enter one of these events, really, but. Okay, depending on how comfortable the man at the table is, he can play the one. Uh, he's, it looks like he's gonna go offensive. Thought he'd play a safety here, but yeah, that's, that's I think the best shot. Maybe didn't get the result he wanted. He's going to give a little look at the one. Now Thorsten, some nine feet away almost. He's got to probably just let the cue ball maybe run into the two off of one cushion. I doubt he wants to roll this softly from that far away. Got a decently big pocket with the three there. Oh, he did play the lighter side. Nice shot. That's a sign of a very comfortable player here early. Yeah, I think the break and run out has got that cue arm lubricated. So watch out from here on in. Okay, probably comes two cushions for the pink four in the right side pocket. Looks pretty perfect. Has a little angle to drop naturally onto the five. 
Now here he'll want to bounce off that top rail and get way above the five. You don't want to end up short to where you can't get easily onto the six, and that's what, exactly what's going to happen here. Yeah, that's a little, I mean, it shouldn't cost him. He's going to have to cut the six a little bit, but he ends up another inch or two short there. That could become very tricky. Just a, a little jerky, that one, but the the end result cannot be criticized in any way. Yeah, still settling in, and seems like when when Thorsten has to apply a lot of side spin is maybe when he's a little more uncomfortable, but I wouldn't say much at all. One of the giants of European pool has taken a 3-1 lead. Now, Jeremy Jones is a very good judge of players when they are coming into form, when they might be one to monitor. Now, what about Chris Melling, your tip earlier on? He's taken a 5-0 lead over Giannis Jolaftis. 5-0 in no time. Darren Appleton, 5-0 up on David Sobiak. Wojciech Chevchik, 4-0 up on Oi Chung Chang. Jani Uski, 4-0 up on... Tobias Hurt and now finally Thomas Jedlecki is off the mark against Nikos Economopoulos nevertheless the Greek is 5-1 up there I can tell you Nayuki Oi 4-1 up on table 2 against Engine Niron and just to repeat and I'm sorry about repetition but I think it's worth telling you just to repeat all of the table 2 action is available on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel Yeah, and what you have with guys like Economopolis or even the guy we're at, that's at the table right now, Thorsten Holman breaking the balls or, or Chris Melling. And they get motivated by this new break rule because they know they're going to get some opportunity at the table, right? You know no matter who you play, if someone breaks and runs six, seven racks and really sits you down in this format, they've done something pretty incredible. And I think Chris, you know, I think what I, I see about Chris is, you know, he's always played, in my opinion, with a hair of a chip on his shoulder. And I think that's lessened up, lightened up a bit. I think it's going to really do well for him here this week. He may roll out to a bit of a tester here. I don't know. May roll out, looks like he's roll, looking at the kick shot. Maybe to roll out behind the seven. Even some type of kick shot on the one. Well, he's gonna go back to what I said. He's gonna leave a bit of a tester here, a long straight one ball. Yeah, Nazar really can't pass this opportunity. Got to try and take this one ball on. Does have a lot of reward if he can make it. Ever since that missed seven ball in the second rack, he's not looked as potent, as happy at the table. I think that shook him because, in my mind, I believe he thought he'd potted that. That's the thing, when you're not used to these tighter pockets, they can really grab you and all of a sudden, your self-belief is eroded. Yeah, and just as experienced a player as Azar is, he still knows that he needs to take advantage you know, of every opportunity that he makes for himself or, or that comes his way. 
And he made a really nice out in that rack as well to miss that seven. You now Thorson's uh, in a funny position here. He won't play the three, four combo. That's just a little bit too difficult. And the safety doesn't look super easy either. The seven's there keeping it hard to run the cue ball. Can't quite just push the three past the four. I wonder if, I don't know what he's doing here. Maybe coming down behind the eight, maybe. I don't know, he's just gonna play it simple. Smart shot. Well, he's giving up a bank here, Phil, so. Probably takes this cross side bank on. I'm not sure if the four passes the seven. It appears it doesn't. So I don't know if he can. Eh, that's a nice shot. Letting the stroke out. Nice shot. He'll use the nine here to hold the cue ball. Sometimes when you get a, a little-known player against a colossus of a player, which Homan is, especially in front of the TV cameras, they can look completely out of place and totally overawed. That's not the case with Senarip Azar so far, Jeremy. No, he's really just, I mean, both of them have missed the safety a little bit um, once apiece, but, I mean, besides that miss on the seven, they both have a miss. Miss seven ball, believe it or not, both of them, and um, he's looked pretty solid. Solidly knocks in the nine ball, and so he trails only three two. So, what do you make of Fulda so far? We had a, a day in the the town yesterday. I think it's a delightful place, don't you? Really good ambience. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, of course, the weather doesn't hurt. It's been perfect so far, and. Of course, we had lunch yesterday that was very nice. Seems like the people are great. You can see that beautiful trophy that someone will hoist Sunday evening here in Fulda. And I'm looking to see more of it, Phil. Just got to get the time to do it. Yeah, you're right about the weather. It is picture perfect, I suppose, for you, Jeremy, coming from Texas. Might feel a little chilly after all of the, the temperatures you've endured. Yeah. Texas has been crazy, not much rain. Of course, that's the entire country, it seems like, back home. But I know Great Britain had the hottest day on record just weeks ago, and more of it coming, I think, as well. Well, we soldiered through. It was 42 degrees C, 104 Fahrenheit. And myself and three other commentators were involved at the Championship League snooker at the Morningside Arena in Leicester. And I can tell you, towards the end of the day, it was toasty in there. It really was. Yeah, and that's another thing we'll see a little more of this week uh, is scratches on the break. You know, some players actually will play a head-on break, but most will play some type of firm cut break. And any time you cut them, the cue ball's moving a bit more. So you won't see any player dodge the scratch this week, I don't think. Watch out, eight ball. Well, a little, little further away from it and a little off angle, so you may have to roll this, considering where the five's at. Looks like he's kind of dragging it in, maybe. Oh, he shot with a lot more speed. And this is what I would have been afraid of with that much speed on the cue ball, getting so thin on the five with the six backup table. Now on the slick table, this type of shot, you can hit a little thick. Oh, you hit it sweet. Thorson kind of picked up the pace here in this rack. Playing a little faster. No shot clock yet, of course, in the tournament, but 
it will be instituted from the weekend onwards for the business end of the event. 30 second shot clock, it will be as per normal at Matchroom Pool events. Uh, Thorsten, nice shot there on the six. Light rub on the eight. Not really any easy position here. May take the bank on, I don't know. Another hit a hair thick to the pocket, but at that speed, it kind of opened it up a little bit. Looks like he's playing safe. Uh-oh, ooh, I thought the side pocket was gonna be a problem. He's actually left a, a potential potting guide here, past the nine, onto the eight. It's a tough shot, but it's certainly makeable. Yeah, and Azara was initially looking at, hey, can I bank the eight freely, trying to make it in the corner and hold the cue ball behind the nine for shape and safe, just in case I miss. I think that's where he's going. So it should just be kind of a stop your ball shot on the eight, trying to long rail bank it. Cut it too much and he lost the cue ball. And that's the second time he kind of let up on the stroke a little bit. And it doesn't cost you a lot of times when you're close to your work, but when you're far away from it and you let up, usually nothing comes out what you imagined. Well, it's a gift for Homan. Just when it looked as though it might be level board. Homan has a modicum of breathing space. He now leads 4-2. Broke through. It doesn't seem this long ago, but it was 19 years ago he won the World Nine Ball Championship. He defeated previous champion Earl Strickland in the semi-finals and then overcame Alex Paguline 17-10 in the final. And by winning that event, capturing that title, he became the third German to become world champion after Oliver Ortman in 1995 and Ralph Suke in 96. Of course, Joshua Fuller is now the fourth. German pool has been so strong for so many years. Yeah, we talked about it on the train ride yesterday. There were quite a few players just having to be on the same ride from Frankfurt and you know, Thomas Ingert was a great player that really, if he had played a little more international events, probably gets some of those big wins that his fellow Germans have, have taken down throughout the years. And Oliver Ortman, what a, what a pleasure to always watch Oliver play. Super exciting. And of course, Ralph Suke, that name speaks for itself. Yeah, I was watching Ralph practicing this morning. He's here. Don't discount him. Now the two does play, but I think position on the three was really a problem with the five and the seven near, so electing to play the safety. Yeah, I don't know if I would kick at the jacked up over the five. I mean, I like that way to kick, but since I'm elevated over the five, I think I kick between the three, four to the top rail. Try and come at the two that way. We have 22 tables. 22 more tables, excuse me, besides the main tables you're viewing here at the bottom of your screen. Lots going on here at the 10 a.m. round and throughout the day here on day one. Yes, if you live near Fulda or anywhere in Germany, anywhere at all, come over. Tickets still available, and for spectators watching this live, there is so much action. It's a case of knowing where to look. Sometimes you need 
five pairs of eyes, let alone one. Yeah, well, I expect uh, this arena to feel as the event goes on. Pool very popular in Germany. By the way, if you do hear a rather loud shout, now I'm not saying he's guaranteed to do it, but if Elliot Sanderson defeats Graham Hamilton, he does have a, a habit of shouting in the moment of victory. And Sanderson is on the hill at 8-2. At first, I thought you were talking about Filler, because Filler has his own celebrations as well, but I didn't think he was in the 10 a.m. round. OK, huge game here to get a three-game lead. I mean, that's just going to make you pretty comfortable again with this new break format. Three-game lead, I believe, looks a lot like a five- or six-game lead in the old format. Nothing completely safe, though. We are still playing winter break. Interested to see if he runs the cue ball above the nine here or if he just stays underneath. He's got options. But he's going to draw it. He's going to pinch it over, I think. Just keep it simple. Oh, no, he pulled it back. Warmly received, the nine ball going in. It appears to me as though class, reputation, career achievement is beginning to come into account here. Torsten Homan leads now 5-2, more than halfway to victory. So as Jeremy said in the previous rack, we have 24 tables in operation right now. And these are some of the latest scores. Jan Iuski, Chris Melling, Wojciech Shevchik, all in total command. So too Darren Appleton over David Sobiak. Nikos Economopoulos is having a great time. 7-1 up on Thomas Jedlecki. Matt Edwards, I'm glad he's doing well. It's an awfully long way from New Zealand to here. Let's hope he goes deep in the tournament. Naoki Oi on table three. But that's table two for our purposes. He's 5-2 up as well and also gaining command. Yeah, we talk about that with Matt Edwards and the guys that come from that part of the world. Just, man, how mentally tough do you have to be knowing every time you go to a major event, it's going to be two days of travel most likely and awful kiss on the cue ball. Now Zara with a, a prime opportunity to get back in this match. I'll tell you a score we didn't talk about there, Phil, that Surprised me, now it's early. Uh, but Han, who played so well at the World Cup of Pool, trails three to one here in his first match. Yeah, totally, and Han, who partnered his Singaporean pupil, Aloysius Schaap, to the final of the World Cup. Yeah, he's in early trouble. I can give you the first result of the tournament. Matthias Snigotsky has whitewashed Brian Nielsen 9-0. And then the second player to record a victory no shout, very disappointing. Elliot Sanderson came through 9-2 against Graham Hamilton. Yeah, and any of those guys that put some racks together, other players will be paying attention to how they're breaking the balls. Not saying we haven't played with a break box before in professional pool, but, but it's still something that uh, you have to get used to and you have to put a lot of reps in. A lot of variables going on with this break. A little thin here, so watch out for the cue ball. Made easy work there. Not one of those players, Jeremy, who gets down low over the cue at all. He's very high. 
Yeah, which is kind of odd for a man that's not super tall. You usually see that a little bit more either with a little bit older players or, or some of the, the bigger size guys. We do have a few ladies in the event as well. I can't forget about them. Is he going somewhere with the cue ball? Is he just trying to ease it in? Okay, depending on many rails here for position and I'd say pretty darn good job. That was the pocket that cost him in the second rack, but no issues here. Well done, Senarib Azar. He's not going away. Torsten Homan's lead is reduced to 5-3. Yeah, there's differences of opinions with this new break rule as far as, you know, how's it really going to play out in the tournament, but I think a lot of the top players make it to where I think that, you know, some of the lesser players, and not, not taking anything away from those guys, but the underdogs, you might say, have a harder chance of winning with this break rule um, because they're going to have to play some incredible pool to put racks together. And then some think that, well, the underdogs have a little more chance because they'll have a little more time at the table. You would think anyways. And in this situation, debate always healthy. Oh, absolutely. I think that's why the game's progressing, you know, with Matchroom at the helm is as it's not a, just a set in stone thing. It's a lot of conversations, a lot of input, a lot of matches to look at. And a dry break at the worst time, it looks like. And a shot on the one for Thorsten Holman. A little straight from some distance though. So he'll have to put some speed into this one to get shape on the two. Three depth back down table. Oh, super stroke there. Now he'll just use a lot of inside English. That would be left English here to try and slide the cue ball by the seven for some type of cut shot on the three. And he bumped the seven a hair. A very unexpected miss, and that's one that has shaken him. You can see. Well, you had mentioned it earlier, a little movement on a shot and a little bit there on the three ball, but a lot of times in the defense of those guys, that movement happens because they're not too in love with the way they struck the cue ball, so they kind of know that it's not exactly right and just creates a little doubt, which makes the body move in the head and whatnot. Long way from resolution here. Not so Nikos Economopoulos, who's defeated Thomas Jedlecki. 9 1. And of course, Nico, his opponent, wasn't one of the top Polish players, but you know, anybody coming from Poland in this event can play. So, a nice opening win. I think we'll see Nikos back today, I believe. Some of the some of the matches, some of the guys will play two winner side today. Some will have to move on to tomorrow. Yeah, also mission accomplished in his first match. Darren Appleton, who beat David Sobiek, 9-2. I believe it was another Polish player, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Good result that. Yeah. We should have a one game scenario here in just a few shots.
How about this for an opener, folks? The Swede is proving stubborn. Senarip Azar now only won a drift. Torsten Homan with so much support and so much riding on this tournament because he's on home soil. He's feeling the pressure. And the loss of that rack, Jeremy, was entirely his own fault. The missed three ball when no one expected him to, to miss the pot. Yeah, he made a beautiful shot on the one. Really nice shot on the two. Got him in a great position for the three and to get back to that three game lead and, and just an unforced error that, like you said, didn't expect. Okay, then it's our first morning. So let me ask you, you've talked about Chris Milling being a potential winner. Give us your tip for the title. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, well, as soon as he makes it into Germany, I kind of always like SVB. He's uh, had some flight issues, so still in route. Talked about it uh, to a few guys, and it actually to him yesterday that I expect I expect Skyler with this last quarter of the year to make some big noise. Uh, you can't ignore Ruiz, of course. I'm trying to think of a player that this break rule uh, may kind of rejuvenate them a little bit at least mentally, if, if anything else. And I think I think maybe, maybe Aloysius Yap. Yeah. We'll watch out for Yap. Yeah. Well, I'm going for this particular player for two reasons. One, he's a terrific potter. And also, I think, law of averages, he's due. Jason Shaw. Well, especially because we haven't seen him run very deep in a few of these events. Uh, Expect him to be one of the guys to win it, and he looks great. Got some family with him, and and uh, he's got to like the way he's playing. I think he'll be okay, and Jason's going to be a tough guy to beat. Well, looky here, might be tied up here in just a moment. So many greats, Phil. It's hard to pick. I mean, easy to pick a filler, easy to pick a Ruiz, I guess. They're in stroke, but I think we're going to see a little something different this week. Well, at the UK Open on the first couple of days on the main match table, we did see a lot of runaways, didn't we? This is most certainly not a runaway. It's the polar opposite. Senarip Azar. He's not got the same reputation as Torsten Homan, not by a million miles, and yet, this match is all tied up at five racks each. Great story to get things underway. Other scores for you, Jan Uski from Finland. 7-1 up now on Tobias Hurt. Chris Melling on the hill, it's 8-3 against Giannis Chaloftis. Also on the hill, Wojciech Shevchik. He's on the verge of a whitewash against Oi Chung Chan. These are all of the, the latest scores coming through. Robbie Capito from Hong Kong, 6-3 up. And how about that? Right at the bottom, another 9-0 whitewash for Can Salim from right here in Germany against Abdul Fattah Jama, a.k.a. AJ, apparently. That's what it says on the official scoring. Well, Can, I spoke with him last night, and he likes where his pool game's at. He's had some success here the last few months with some nice finishes. And a super talented player, I'll tell you. He's, gonna, he's, he's kind of a sneaky player that a lot of players may overlook. Other wins to tell you about for Mohamed Sufi against Mikhail Olak. 9-2, and Dimitri Jungo. 9-0 over Pierce Bear.
over on table two, by the way, which is watchable on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Naoki Oi is on the hill against Engine Neron. 8 2 the scoreline there. So I think generally making things worse for Thurston Homan is that he's the only big name at the moment who is finding difficulty in overcoming an opponent. Yeah, and that's pretty uncommon, actually. Usually there's a few matches that are going to run pretty close, if, if not some upsets. We'll see several, you know, the first few rounds here will be the first round of the event. I'll tell you, he's got a thin shot on the one, but pretty nice shot on the one with the two near. Did grab a one nothing lead to start this match and trying to grab another lead midway through. Now, I was telling you that Naoki Oi was on the hill. Now he's just three balls away from victory. You were very observant earlier, Jeremy. I think he is playing with a lot more freedom these days, and that's certainly been the case in this match. Yeah, I love watching that guy play. He's so much fun, and, you know, his character, right? You know, being a character, and he's got plenty of character, but that was talked about with Oi for many, many years, his interviews and whatnot, so fun-loving, and but really he's starting to show it a lot more on the table these days, and he's going to have a huge win here in the next, uh, I don't know how soon, we don't know, but pretty soon, I would think. Naoki Oi playing to the crowd at the end there. He defeats Engineer on from Turkey, 9-2. I'll tell you, if you're paying attention to table one, Azar, I don't know his game, but I can tell when someone's settling in, and that's exactly what's happening here. Super nice shot on the two, floating it by the eight all the way down table. And like you said, he's played a ton of events. So he has that element of getting comfortable into a position, you know, where he feels good, right? Been there before. Maybe not something like this exactly, but I'm sure he's played Thorsten a bunch of times anyways. But I think the impressive thing for me, we see so many players who melt in front of the TV cameras, and he's not one of them. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. Well, really, kind of the out of the match he's doing right here, I think. Opening shot on the one was super nice. Got in a funny position on the two. Did it really clean at a light speed, which is hard to do. And now in a great position on the eight to get easily onto the nine. And like I said, take that lead at six to five. Now the pressure is really starting to mount for Thorsten, I think. What an interesting story this is. Senareb Azar, he is not a, a lamb to the slaughter in any way. He's 6-5 up. Torsten Homan playing on home soil has got an awful lot to do to stem this tide. And really the first offensive shot after the break, I think uh, in the last rack and he took full advantage. We'll see what happens. On, on the break off in game number 12. But yeah, I'm interested to see what when Thorsten gets back to the table, and I'm sure he will, what type of opportunity he has, and then, you know, kind of how he, he goes from there. That three ball that he missed was huge. I don't think we can overstate, and we've mentioned this before, Jeremy, but I think it's worth briefly exploring again. When you play on home soil and there's all the eyes on you and all of that added expectation, it really is, some people say it's a good thing, but it can be very distracting. 
Yeah, and I think it can be very extreme one way or another is the main point. You know, it can be if things go on your way, it can be like uh, the best home court advantage you could ever imagine. But if you start to struggle a little bit, a little doubt in the mind, um, it can add pressure. That's for sure. Now enough, another tough shot on the opening ball after the break. But if he gets this down, he's got a good chance to extend that lead. Elevating the cue here, trying to hold the cue ball for the three. Wow, hit it pretty well overall. Don't know if he's giving up a shot or not. The pink four may just have a small eclipse on the cue ball getting at the two. Hit a lot of the pocket here. Now maybe over hit it a little bit. That could have been the thing. Thorson going to the jump cue maybe. Maybe a swerve shot. Maybe he has a clean look at the two, but I kind of felt like the four had him a little snookered. Just to keep you right up to date with, just received the news that our second match here on table one today on the stream is not going to be Albin Aushin against Sandor Kant. It will be Aloysius Yap of Singapore, World Cup runner-up recently, up against Noel Bensaid from France. Well, he's got to put a little draw into this. Yeah, he was trying to actually go forward with the cue ball. Pretty nice shot there. Making the two, I think, you know, that's something he was supposed to do in that regard, even with the jump cue, but trying to get some type of position on the three, it was pretty nice. Now the three does bypass the eight. Hard shot, though, because it's not easy to draw the ball without a little fear of the side pocket. Well, it's that three ball again, and it's also jumpy again. History repeating itself. Yeah, I talk about it all the time, and I, I've dealt with it many times. And you know, me and Thorsten's technique is a little different. I'm a little, the tempo's a little different. But when nerves are high, it's hard to slow the stroke down. And if you already have a little bit of a quick tempo, it, it can be tough. Little straightish here, so he's got to use a little speed to move the cue ball over for the four. I don't know if he'll draw it or try to just stun over between the five nine, play the four maybe in the right middle side pocket. Oh, nice. He's pretty comfortable, I'll tell you. Azar looks pretty good. Just lay on the bottom rail here, a little below the six. That way he can naturally come up table for the seven in the upper right. Gate's near. So as long as you stay off the rail, you don't have to get like a, a big angle on the seven to really work the cue ball. So I wouldn't get to where I am have any kind of missable shot on the seven. That's actually pretty ideal. The realization must have dawned with Azar that he's got a really wonderful chance to win this match. But so far, everything is holding up. 
Yeah, he's a little off angle here. And if he stretches over the side of the table, I'd rather, yeah, I like this better coming from the back end. When I stretch over the side here, you have a tendency to punch the ball a little bit more rather than really draw the ball. Oh, that was nice. Azar, 7-5, two racks away from a giant killing act in our very first match on the featured table here at the European Open, the inaugural European Open taking place at the Esperanto Conference Center in Fulda in Germany. Look at that confirmation of a real shock in the offing. And as you guys say over here, that's five on the spin, I believe. He was trailing five to two. Earned that eighth rack, but that big miss in the ninth rack on the three ball from Thorsten really kind of changed things. Yeah, five in a row, five in on the spin, five on the bounce. Oh, you I like that it. one, bounce, yeah. What a slow match. Is taking place on table 12. Clemens Eber from Germany is 4 1 up on Tolian Han. That match significantly lagging behind all of the others. Must have been some really messy racks. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier. Some of the players are still trying to figure out the break. The thing about the cut break, of course, we're playing a forceful break, but if you overhit them, uh, when you're cutting them, right? Cue ball's in the air a little bit. You don't get much energy into the rack, so you can get a lot of clusters. So there's that fine, you know, kind of timing you have to tune in. And the one ball leaking towards the corner. It doesn't look like it's going to go, but I think the three and the five are in the way for Thorsten, so things have really changed on the German here. Very difficult rollout situation with the one over the pocket. Yeah. I, I guess Thorsten feels like he can get at this one, maybe to the right side rail, playing a rail first shot. Probably going to have to let the cue ball run a lot. Maybe comes around for a 2-4 combination in the left side. That kind of looks like what the cue ball naturally wanted to do, wants to do, excuse me. Yeah, this will be the long right side rail with a lot of left spin. Needs to catch the one pretty thin to run the cue ball. Oh, that's too thin, Phil, and things have come apart a little bit. You know, at this stage of these big open pool events we've been seeing, the UK Open, the US Open last year, now here at the European Open. Shocks have been in very short supply, thin on the ground. This could be an almighty upset. Yeah, and he's really got just uh, the way he's played. He's got one shot here to make. I mean, of course, he's got to clear the table, but he's really settled in. If he gets on this two ball, which I think he should run the cue ball around to the backside of the two again and play that two four combo. And the reason being is if you get a little, you know, off angle on the two, the four over the pocket makes the shot so much easier. But again, if he gets up eight to five, those that's a big lead with our our new break format we're using here at the European and Open. I liked what he was doing. It looks like he's kind of questioning maybe his gut instinct here. I like this this path here coming with low left English. Come two rails and then between the three five to the right long rail. He's just hitting a little left, no low really. Is he gonna catch the three? No. And this is what I mean, watch. He's gonna get a little thin here. And I don't know if the two passes the three, but 
with the four over the side, this makes, you know, a very playable combination, even though it's not easy. And now it looks like the two passes of the three. The way Azara is sizing up the shot. The mouth a little drier, the, the palms a little more sweaty. The heart fluttering a little more violently. And the, the hesitation increasing. Well, one thing that's been a big benefit to him in this match, for the most part on the toughest, tougher shots, he's kind of simplified the shot. Didn't try to do a whole lot with the cue ball. Looks good. Just got to pay attention here on the combo, making sure the three rests over the side pocket. If you hit the four a little to one side or the other, the three could end up on the rail. Easy shot, but something you have to pay attention to. I must say, yes, Homan's made mistakes, but I really have been impressed by his opponent. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Phil. And he, you know, like all of us, you know, you want to improve as the match goes, which he's done that. Of course, you want to improve as the tournament goes, and we'll see how that unfolds for both these players. But he's definitely, you know, had a few mistakes early, but steadied the ship and, and has made some big shots. And you just don't feel like there's going to be the big mistake on something simple from Azar at this moment anyways. What I've liked with Azar, he's kept things in a very simplified form, hasn't he? He's not tried anything outlandish. He's played well within himself. And as the match has gone on, he's making fewer and fewer mistakes, whereas his opponent seems to be making more. Yeah, and I think that's where that pressure part, the mental side of things, of course, Thorson's prepared for this event. It's nothing physical going on, but one thing I like from Azar is a player like him in this kind of situation sometimes will almost take too much time on every shot, and he's gone on with it. Now, he took a little time on that one ball trying to figure out what he wanted to do, but overall, if his mind was set, he went ahead and, and shot, and I like the looks of that. And you got to look at the looks of this 8-5. to five if you're an Azara fan. How about this? Senarip Azar is on the hill. Torsten Homan is in a world of hurt. When he was 5 to ahead, who could have possibly foreseen this? Amazing, really. Amazing the turnaround and just how amazing the, the effects pressure can have. There it is, confirmation, Azar, one rack away from what would be, I'm not going to say his biggest ever victory because that's, of course, personal choice for him. But in terms of international streaming exposure, definitely the biggest win of his career. Yeah, I agree. And without knowing a ton about his career, that's for sure. But big moment here, rack number 14, his last time to break in this match. I always want to give the best effort when that's the situation. And I think there's a lot of players watching the end of this match, and, and there's many reasons why. Thorson, again, has been such a great host so far. He's very well liked throughout the pool world, and the players love the guy. And nothing against Azar, but I, I bet there's just a lot of players pulling for Thorson to make this little comeback right here just because we're right here in Folded. He's such a great guy. Oh, well, looked like it was going to be a really nice kiss on the two ball. Ended up not so much. Probably pushes out maybe somewhere near the five here, maybe pocketing the five. This is where you want to roll out fairly tough if you're a czar. You want to make Thorsten have to make a good shot if he's going to take on the rollout. 
while the contemplation is going on, I can tell you Chris Melling is over the line. He's beaten Giannis Chaloftis 9-4. Yanni Uski also a winner 9-1 over Tobias Hurt. Proper push out there. Don't see much offensive. Probably clips this and tries to run the cue ball. It could kick behind the two, trying to play the two up behind the six, maybe. And he passed this shot. I'm not saying totally surprising. A little bit, maybe. And uh, maybe a little more than a little bit surprising, to be honest with you. You could bank the two over by the six, using the six, nine. Kind of run the cue ball up this right side rail. Now you have to have good control on the speed. And of course the hit on the two has to be fairly accurate. But I'm surprised he passed it so quickly. Not so surprised he passed it. It looks like he's kicking behind this. A little soft spin, a little soft right English. That's a little bit the shot I was considering if I'm Thorsten. And not a bad play from Azar. And this is treacherous right here. I mean, this isn't laying natural to get position on the three anywhere, really. The three doesn't pass the five in the upper right. It's a ton of angle on the two, so if he goes offensive, the cue ball will be moving. And I don't really see a comfortable safety. I don't think at the moment Homan's comfortable with anything. Who would be in this situation? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And I think the rollout, really the decision to pass it so quickly, definitely tells me he's not so comfortable, and I understand it. See in the background there, Nick DeLeon of America. He'll play at the 11.30 round. I don't, really don't know what the shot is. It looks like he's trying to bank the two back between the three nine, maybe. That's the only thing I could see. Uh, he's caught it thin. Going to need some help. Got a little bit. But you're going to see a Zara attack trying to win this match right here. He can bury this two ball, come away with something on the three. The layout's not too tough. I know it's first round, but considering the opposition, this is one of the biggest shots of his life. I think just a little low left English. Take your chances here, drawing across and back over. You might catch a piece of the four. Not terrible, but I, I think he should attack here. Well, he got the arm moving there. And he's hit most of these types of shots. Not light, light, but fairly light, I would say. Well, it looks like he was hitting top English. Top English, to me, doesn't agree with this shot. I think he has to hit down on the cue ball. Here, a 30-second shot clock might actually do him a favor because the more he thinks about this, the, the more opportunity for negativity. Yeah, and pool is really a sport. Go with your gut. And he's hitting a high ball. I think makes the shot tougher, and I'm not sure it really gets you positioned. What a shot. I'll tell you what, if he gets out here, he has definitely earned this win. Well, any highlight reel from day one has to include that shot. Simply brilliant. And I'm not sure really how he can make a mistake from here. Five's over the pocket, the four's in front of him, the six goes in the side easily, the eight's not far. So, as we had at the UK Open with Ruiz, we, we're going to have probably a big name and a hometown favorite, two-time world champion, go to the one-loss side. Yes, last year, Torsten Homan 
was voted into the Billiards Congress of America, the BCA Hall of Fame. That's the career he's had, colossal. And yet, right now, he's on the verge of a defeat no one saw coming, certainly not me. Well, he's gotten perfect here. Just a hint of an angle on the six, which will lead him to, to an easy shot on the eight. And I'll tell you, I've been to many of them Hall of Fame banquets or dinners, inductions. I'll tell you, I don't know if I had was more impressed with any of them than Thorson Holman's last year. Really great. It was a great evening. Homan looks like playing Mohamed Daydat from South Africa in the one loss round. Daydat's been beaten by Abdullah Alenzi, 9 4. And now here. Just the eight and nine ball between Senarib Azar and a victory that gets this tournament underway in the most. Intriguing fashion. And that's a confident sign drawn back underneath the nine. Azar! Azar indeed! He's proved a hazard, not an 